finally doing it. We are finally getting the yellow Evo 8 tuned. Today is going to be a day of buttoning up this build and also getting the yellow Evo 8 ready for the dyno. Sometimes waiting on parts, like what we're waiting on right now, all of the wiring connectors and loom to finish up this engine harness, sometimes, most of the time, it is very frustrating just waiting forever. But in this case, it works out perfectly because this car needs some love. And like I said, man, Evo 8 is hitting the dyno tomorrow. So that thing needs to be 100% before we head out and strap that thing down and make some power. I do want to get this 10 more buttoned up as well before I just hand her off to Bobby. Now she really doesn't need a whole lot. Airbag lights on because we put in the heated Recaros and the weight sensor. There's a weight sensor in the passenger seat. There's a more specific word for it, but that needs to be calibrated, which I can do. Just haven't done it. The AYC system needs to be bled out. I need to install the inner fenders in case it rains. I need to install the side skirts. I need to cut the filter and make sure all that looks good. I need to pull out the water and put in coolant, so on and so forth. So I guess there is quite a bit, there's quite a bit I want to get done before I trade Bobby for the red type R. I gotta install some bolts. These are frustrating. I'll tell you guys why later. Center console center console is torn apart stuff like that as far as tuning this car goes though it'll probably happen much more quickly than the yellow evo 8 this will probably be tuned i don't know maybe before we leave for hawaii i want to i want to get at least 100 miles on the build i don't care to put a thousand miles on or whatever some people claim that you have to put on a new motor before you hit the dyno just enough miles to ensure that everything's good to go it's not gonna have any hiccups any issues any uh, problems arise hopefully when we're tuning that's kind of the point so it doesn't have a new clutch it doesn't have new cams the only thing we are breaking in and seating with this setup is the piston rings and they'll seat pretty quick clutches yeah you should break in camshaft you need to you need to do a camshaft break in stuff like that but yeah that's kind of the kind of the plan with this tuning session on the evo 10. Bam, probably my two nicest conditioned vehicles that I own. Well, that we own. The glorious eight build, you guys all know this, in Bobby's glorious Evo 10 build. The perfect combo, man. That's pretty cool looking. First order of business, we need to get the Type R off the lift. Obviously it doesn't run, but it does have full suspension wheels and tires, so we can push it. I guess technically speaking, <coughs> If I wasn't tuning the 8 tomorrow, tomorrow we would have this thing back on the road. At least the first start. Probably not on the road, but first start for sure. But we've all been waiting years for the 8 tune. What you looking at, buddy? Let's work on this girl first. And let's start out with the annoying things. Because if I don't do the annoying things first, they will never get done. These bolts, these guys. Sometimes you just forget to install stuff. We gotta pull this door off, which is a little bit annoying, but these bolts are actually for the dash bar, the dash support. They go in right there and right there. I pulled them out when we painted the jams, and of course, I forgot to install them before I put the door on. So this door needs to come off like two inches. I gotta put bolts back in for the dash support, I forgot, and then just put it back, set it back on. Your main job is to make sure I don't hit the fender. So if it hits the fender, I'm okay. I can hold it right here on the inside. Bolt one is in, like so. Not bad. All right, next up. This old girl looks a little unbalanced without her skirts. This car, we run the Varus front and the Varus side skirts. The front ends of the Varus bumper sit pretty low. And if you don't run the skirts with it, well, there it is with no skirt at all. But even the OEM skirts with the Varus front bumper looks a little bit unbalanced. Now with the skirt installed, that's how it looks. I do need to build brackets that hold the skirt on underneath. For now, it's just riveted on to the rocker right there. And they're a little bit floppy. The front bumper is kind of the same way. It's just held on with bolts on the end and yeah, she's floppy. 
Now that, my friends, is a proper looking Evo 10. Let's get a roll on the lift. I gotta get those inner fenders in and we need to secure the skirts and the bumper a whole lot better before they fall off. These look like Evo 8. Huh. Remember like two weeks ago, I said I need to stop ordering parts and not installing them within a reasonable amount of time. I bought these inner fenders for this project when we painted the car like two, three years ago. Lo and behold, they're for an Evo 8 or Evo 9. Moving on, I did add in an additional bolt from the bumper to the fender right up in here. And then the side skirt as well, I bolted from here to the fender. So that's way more sturdy. That is way better. And the underside of the bumper, that's gonna be pretty sturdy as soon as we get the skid plate back on. Before that goes on, let's go ahead and pop the filter out, cut it, make sure everything looks good. All right, let's do the, the scary part of any new build. Let's lop this filter. Oil looks perfect. I'm certain that filter is gonna look good too, but it's always good to take a look. So this is exactly what you wanna see in a brand new motor. All that looks nice and clean. Tiny little specs. It's a brand new motor, what do you expect? If you peel back these layers of the paper, you of course don't wanna see a bunch of gunk. That is the best filter cut I've ever done. Nothing is perfect. Two things left that I wanna take care of, both with the Autel scanner. First off, let's go ahead and bleed out the AYC ACD system on the car. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, y'all hear that? Alrighty, that is all finished up. Show's completed. Next thing, let's fix the airbag light on this car. I'm pretty sure it's because of that passenger seat. I believe they call it the occupancy sensor. Let's do a quick scan and see what it says. OCM DTC present and some other seat stuff as well. So to do this, we need 30 kilograms of something. My 30 kilograms of choice is a pair of brake rotors from Rock Auto, a pair of brake pads, and a Milwaukee half inch impact. So if we go into the OCM, occupancy control module, we should be able to get this taken care of with the special function. Zero, cal zero calibration test, step one, zero, step two, 30 kg, step three, zero. Ensure passenger seat's empty, slide passenger seat to the back. Press OK. OK. Do you want to start? OK. Completed. Go to 30 kg. OK. 30 kg went through. Now we go back to zero. And the verdict is test passed. Perfect. Let's fire old girl up and see if airbag light is taken care of. No check engine light, no airbag light, no ABS light, just a seatbelt light. Heck yes. Alrighty, one last thing before I work on the yellow eight. This guy. I need to put this together for Bobby. It's like a little armrest that she had custom made somewhere, surprisingly. I think it's supposed to match that, which is a pretty cool look. So let's get that sorted out. Now that right there, that's a pretty nice look. White stitching, white stitching, white Vossen heavyweight knob, nice carbon wheel. Interior is pretty, pretty decent on this car. I think we are gonna go for like the final edition look, all black headliner and pillars and whatnot, but that's for a different day. Provided everything looks good with this car, this should be pretty quick. I do want to change the oil, check the plugs, just check all the fluids, make sure everything looks perfect before we hit the dyno. All right, same concept as the 10. Let's pop this filter off. I don't even know how many times I've done a filter cut. Is this like the third since I put this new motor in? Not many. Oil's black. That's 
cool. It means I actually got my use out of it. So I'm gonna drain this oil into a clean pan just so I can take a good look at it. Just to make sure nothing funny is going on. I didn't see anything funny coming out. I don't see anything funny in the pan. No shimmery, no nothing. Let's cut this filter and see how that filter looks. Please be clean. Made in Thailand, huh? OEM Mitsu filter made in Thailand. Black, but beautiful. I'd rather it be black than gold or silver. That is a perfect cut. Again, what a good day. Evos are treating me good today. They're treating me good. Oh yeah, that is beautiful. All right, let's get some oil back in this thing. A new filter. Every time I put a new filter on, people always comment that I need to oil the seal. If you use OEM Mitsu filters, they come pre-greased. By the way, All right, I went through, checked everything else over. Everything appears that it's good to go. And this thing is ready for the dyno. Let's fire it up, get that oil moving around, make sure we got a good level on there. And that is it. I'm so curious how this setup is going to react to some boost, to some timing. How much power is she gonna make? She sounds so good. Quick breakdown on the setup, if you guys don't really know the build. I know we built this thing over like uh, at least well over a year. It's a 2.3 liter stroker running a set of BC camshafts, BC springs and retainers, Arginari turbo, Magnus intake manifold, FIC 1650s, single wall bro 450. It's a pretty basic setup, 2.3 liter like I said, with a not crazy big turbo. And of course on Heltec Elite 2500, flex fuel, all that good stuff. Anything over 500 wheel in this car is gonna feel ridiculous. So if it made 500, even on ethanol, I would be happy. All right, she is ready. She's ready for the dyno. Which if everything goes to plan, that will be bright and early tomorrow morning. I'm gonna wrap up the video right here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out my friends, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for dyno day.